at the Civic Center in Thibodeau. I was supposed to be a tune-up fight for this guy. Just got out of the Nationals, and this is the God's truth. I touched him with the jab. Come with the right hand. There's no standing eight count. Right? I got him in the ring, round boom, on the corner. Working him over. And all of a sudden, the referee stops and he says, No more. And that was his pro debut. Just got out the Nationals. A hell of a fire. Young boy, 23. And here I was, 36 years old. My upbringing, well, nine years old, I went to the boys' home. Well, it, it was called Hope Haven and Madonna Manor. A boys' home is where your parents sent you. You know, there was five of us. My mother was a, a hell of a woman. We were five kids with no father. She was our father, my father, and mother. Bless her soul. You know, she did it for the good of us. I went in that boys' room, and my brother, younger brother Tommy, we had to either fight or else. And so I took up boxing back in the day. I was in that boys' room at the age of 13. There was a boy named Raymond McDonald. I had never put a pair of gloves on in my life. His name was Raymond McDonald, had a chip tooth. I'll never forget this. He was Golden Glove champion at the age of 13. So this nun named Sister Martin, I'm gonna be 69 on the 19th, and I could still remember Sister Martin said, don't mess with him. So he kept messing with me and we put the gloves on for the first time I was 13 years old when I put a pair of boxing gloves on. I had no boxing technique. All I had was power. And he was like Ch -ch 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 -ch. But he couldn't control the anger I had in my, oh, you know. I had a lot of anger, you know. Went through a lot in my lifetime. So from then on, after I beat him, everybody said, you need to box. Then at the age of 15, that's when I really got into the Junior Olympic. Elze Verdan, he was my amateur coach when I was young, like 15 years old, here in Hume. At the age of 18 years old, when I fought in that Tough Man contest, there was no weight division, no weight division at all. I entered the Tough Man contest, Van Horn says, uh, uh, he was a promoter. He said, I'd like for you to fight a boxing exhibition. So I fought a, this black guy for an exhibition, but I also fought other guys, and there was no weight category. You know what I'm saying? There was no weight category, and I ended up coming out third place. I was known for this crazy right hand. Overhand right, boom, boom. And I developed the nickname Boom Boom because I would run across the ring and I boom, boom, you, you know. <laughs> that, so I developed that, I got that nickname Boom Boom Bill Yacht and it was, it stuck with me. I go everywhere, people don't call me Ricky, they call me Boom Boom. Uh, if you call me Ricky, I might not even answer you. <laughs> I know the nickname Boom Boom and that's it. Oh, I was hooked. I, I, I've been a boxing fan all my life. You know, boxing ain't what it used to be, you know. Um, back in my days, we had all them good fighter Chavez, Sugar Ray Leonard, the best boxer there ever was. You know, you know he wasn't a Mayweather. He, he, he went in there and he, he, he would sw trade off with you. Mayweather is a runner. Sugar Ray and all them fighters way back in there, they would stand toe to toe and, and get it, you know. I'm a native Indian, a homie Indian. And you know, when I was growing up, we were considered Sabines and stuff, you know. And I, I didn't like that word. And I, I said, there was times I got in many of fights because of that. But now things had, you know, it's not as bad as it used to be. I was married at the age of 17, had my first son. So that, that slowed down my boxing career. It was rough. But back in them days, we, we didn't have to pay all this high dollar stuff and all, you know. We didn't have shoes that was $200 and $400, you know. It was pretty, it was pretty rough. Oh, Jesus. It was like, just like the blacks complaining. It was like racing. You know, back then, growing up in this town, and, and I went through hell. People wouldn't, I was constantly fighting. It was hell, let me tell you, you know. It's not as bad now, but I, 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 I earned respect from not just regular people in this town. When I started boxing, there were judges, lawyers, and every people would come 
watched me fight because I was excited. It was the best feeling of my life because I was accepted to be the native. Excuse me, I get it. I've never lost. Imagine what my nationality was, you know? But they accept me. And from then on, it's been great. I don't care who you are. I could teach any kid how to, the basics. It's a natural ability to be able to fight. It's a God gift, and that's the truth. You know? All you gotta learn is the techniques and a few deals, you know? But it's a natural. Well, I just did it on my own. Ah! Right here, 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 and here. You're putting them to sleep. There was things, you know, I didn't, I'm, I'm self-made, I'm a self-made, I, basically, I learned everything from watching because I, I was born with this gift and there's things that I picked up on my own. I didn't, and as far as training, my training was go down Martin Luther King, my wife would drop me off, boom. And then I, right here, I live down the street further. I run, tunnel, everybody seen, used to see me blowing the horn, I wave to them. To me, if you, you get in the ring, you put the gloves on, and the best way to learn about boxing is to get in there and exchange punches. Plain and simple. Man. Something I always wanted to tell my side of the story. I ain't had it in life. It's not a whole lot of weight. Too much weight builds bulk, and muscle needs oxygen. <laughs> Leg up. Don't like sit up, so just pure D strength, holding it in the back. Ah, can't touch this. Ah, ah, can't touch this. <laughs> Praise the Lord, people. Back in my days, we didn't have a tire, be flipping the tire. We didn't have a sledgehammer, beating and all of that, you know. Things, you know, you got all these um, trainers, you know. They're throwing in all kinds of different things. Back in my days, all I did was run, push-ups, and sit-ups. You know, we didn't have all of this stuff and all. You know, oh, I love it. I was the very first one, and now if you see, that's all you see is native. They got Smiley Birdame, Jonathan Gidry. We got all of these fighters. Oh, well, when I first started, <laughs> the money's a lot bigger for sure. <laughs> Listen. I used to fight for fifty dollars around. Norris Steiner, twenty years old, two hundred and seventy-eight wins, twelve losses. I fought him that night. I beat him, but they called it a draw. Right here, him. A four-round fight was two hundred dollars, okay? And then you got a manager here. Well, not even a manager, somebody that you know could work your corner and promote. Wants thirty percent of your cut. Willie Pastrana. You, he's, he was Angelo Dundee's first light heavyweight champion in the world. Okay, one night I'm in uh, Terrytown. You know what Terrytown? I'm fighting uh, a Gidry guy, okay? And I had to give this guy 30% of my pay with the other guy that was in my corner, which was, I'm, he, he's deceased now, God bless his whole, but I'll never forget, Doug Bullock and Willie Pastrana was working my corner, Angelo Dundee's first light heavyweight champion of the world. I got tired of giving my manager or, or somebody that worked my corner, you know, 30% of my cut. $200, you fighting a four round fight? What the hell? You got to give this guy? No, 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 no. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, so I said, hell, I don't need to give somebody else. My brother, a friend, all they had to do was give me water. <laughs> you know what? I mean? You ain't gonna tell me what I don't know already. You know, I've been fighting all my life. My hardest fight? Just Mexican. <laughs> Let me tell you, buddy. <laughs> this is something. My first pro fight, they needed a fill-in, okay? So I decided, hey, hey, I'm the fill-in. I've been working out backyard stuff. <laughs> it's only 85 pounds. Flat, I got clocked on that button and I hit the ground. But it didn't destroy my, my heart. My heart is, I love the game, I love the sport. That's all, I mean, what can I say, you know? I've been doing this a long time. You, know? you see Wilson Avenue right there? You see this house? You see that white house right there? A limousine come pick me up, brought me to Louisville, Kentucky, 
to fight Frankie Randall, ranked number two in the world by the WBC and the WBA. He's the first fighter that ever beat Chavez. His name was Frankie Randall. And at the time when I went to go fight him, I didn't fight him. I went up there training, they had a spy in the gym. They knew I had that one punch knockout chance to stop him. I was supposed to be a tune-up. Met Muhammad Ali over there, got his autograph. Didn't mean nothing to me. <laughs> Autographs don't mean nothing. The only signature I need is God. <laughs> No, Harris the Tiger, I destroy him. Harris the Tiger, New Orleans, Louisiana, 17 and 1. I stopped him that night. Actually, the ambulance, he was taken out on a stretcher. You ever see those cartoons with knots on their head? <laughs> yeah. He had them on. And when he hit the ground, his leg was shaking. His legs were shaking. I trained though in the morning and in the evening. For this guy, 17 and 1. One of the best fighters besides Melvin Paul, who come out of New Orleans. Out of New Orleans. New Orleans had a lot of great fighters. And yeah, New Orleans had a lot of great fighters. He was 17 and 1, let me tell you. I was in Morgan City, living in a motel room. Me and my wife, she was pregnant for my, my daughter. She would sit on a bench and watch me train in the morning, and then I go in the evening and train. I would spar with schoolboy Van Horn. He was the, the IBF welterweight champion of the world. When we went to Louisville, Kentucky, he fought, but I didn't. His daddy decided to stay up there because they realized in this little town, we wasn't going away. He invited me to go up there and stay with him. Like I told you, back there, uh, he had a, a limousine pick me and another guy from whom up, uh, Randy Davis. His name was Randy Davis. He was a light heavyweight. We went to Louisville, Kentucky, and that's what I said. But you see this Budweiser here? When I first promoted my first show, Budweiser was a backer for me. They bought tables and all, but the wife didn't want to make that move. His son became the IBF welterweight champion of the world, and I used to spar him and jump him every day and whip him. I love it. I miss it so bad. I want to get back in there so bad. Dude, I want to do an exhibition. That was a, in West Wigo, that was an oldie but goodie with all the older fighters. Oh. You know what I'm saying? All the good old fighters, you know, boom, boom, match make. We had headgears and everything, and I, and um, I was just, I'm just crazy about it. I, I just love the game. I can't. What can I say? And plus, I had something to prove. I was a little guy, little man. And stop, be quiet. I had to do it all over again. One thing I had to do, I would just train and train and train, cause I knew I could have became the lightweight champion of the world.